I think I was sat in this exact same spot when I filmed the equivalent video to this last year. So you already know why we're here from the title and that's to talk about 19 things I want to do in 2019. So last year for the first time I set myself a sort of list of 18 things I wanted to do in 2018 that weren't New Year's resolutions but things that I actually really wanted to do, they might have been trips to museums, books I wanted to read, things I would get pleasure of or things that were important to me that I was likely to do that weren't, you know, some crazy wild stretch of the imagination um, and would be able to look at my list throughout the year if I was looking for something to do or to focus on that I could I could pick up and just sort of like centre my mind with and enjoy myself and just find joy throughout the year. That was the purpose of these things. They were meant to help me find happiness. So that list was actually super successful. I did all but three things on it which I have decided to carry over to this year because they're all three things I would still like to do and seem very achievable. Apart from those three, the other 16 things I want to do in 2019 are completely new, they're maybe inspired by things I did in 2018 or just completely out of the blue, um, but I thought I would share them with you again. I want to thank Skillshare for very kindly sponsoring this video and I will be talking about them a little bit further in. So without further ado, let's get into the 19 things I want to do in 2019. Very, very briefly, I will tell you the three things I'm carrying over from 2018. The first one is to pass my upgrade status at university for my PhD. If you want more detail about that, I just did a PhD update video. Um, which I will link down below, but essentially the only reason I didn't complete this this year was just um, schedules. So I was meant to have the interview for that part of my PhD this month in December, but you know, it just didn't come about schedule wise. However, I have done all the work I need to do for it and the interview is in January. So all I'm really hoping for at this point is that I pass the interview and I do well in it. Um, so wish me luck in that, but that is one of the first things I intend on hopefully clicking off this list in 2019. The other two things were um, kind of fun trips. So one is to go to the V&A in London, which is an art gallery that I've never been to, uh, the Victoria and Albert collection I believe that stands for and the other one is to go to the Natural History Museum which is a museum I have been to in London but not since I was very small and I would love to go as an adult. Um, I, I want to see those 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 electric dinosaurs again, those terrified me when I was little. <laughs> um, but both are free and easy to get to, so I really want to take advantage of them being in London and me being in London in 2019. On that topic, there are a few other things that I want to take advantage of in London as I live there for the time being. And one of those is to see one specific painting. So the National Gallery in London recently acquired a painting by the uh, artist Artemisia Gentileschi. Artemisia was a Italian Baroque painter who was alive in the first half of the 1600s. Um, her work is sort of in the same vein as artists like Caravaggio. And this is the first painting by her that the National Gallery in London have obtained. It was bought recently and one of the things that's so special about this is just the underrepresentation of female artists throughout history and in gallery spaces, despite, as Artemisia proves, their existence. So I think it's incredible that we finally have one of her paintings in the National Gallery in London, which is a free gallery that, again, I have easy access to, so I really want to take advantage of and go and see this painting, although I do believe it's also doing a tour of the UK this year, so if you live somewhere else, keep an eye out and see if it's um, cropping up in a gallery near you. She is somebody that I find incredibly fascinating, a very strong historical figure that um, I am really interested in learning more about. And although actually I have seen one of her paintings in person, I saw a painting by her in an exhibit last year in Edinburgh. I would love to see this painting in particular because it is a self-portrait. So. I am looking forward to doing that at some point this year. I also want to visit the London Mithraeum, which is also free, so these are all great things to do if you're in London, um, but you do have to book in advance. Um, that's not to say you can't perhaps book on the day or book the day before, but you know, check on their website um, to see if there's spaces available for their tours. And this Mithraeum is a Roman Mithraeum or temple that was um, excavated years and years ago um, <laughs> under the ground in London from when the Romans were obviously over in Britain. Um, it was then moved to the top of a building and was recently 
moved back to where it was supposedly originally found and yeah essentially you can go for little tours around it. It's these remains of a temple found located underneath the ground um, and you can book little tours to go and see it and it's free and that's something I would like to do in 2019. On the side of productivity there are three major things I would like to do in 2019. The first of those is to finish a draft of my novel. So I had been writing fiction since I was about seven. I love writing fiction and in 20 18, that was last year, <laughs> I um, started writing a new fantasy novel that I'm so, so thoroughly enjoying writing um, and I feel like really making progress on and I have momentum. So I would really like to, you know, just finish a draft of that in the year. It will not be the complete thing because I already have things I want to go back and change in the like 30 odd thousand words I've already written. But I would like to have written from beginning to end this entire drafted novel within the space of 2019 which I feel like at the pace I'm currently writing it that should be fine but like I said I'm not going to be writing a finished beautiful perfect product I'm just going to be getting the story out of me which I find really satisfying and um, my friend Jill has been reading it as I write it a chapter at a time and it's so nice having somebody reading your work and then you can talk about it with them so I've been so very much enjoying that and I would like to continue that in 2019. I also want to publish the third season of my podcast That's Ancient History which again I started in 2018 and it was one of my things to do on my list for 2018 and I did it. Currently halfway through season two so if you haven't listened to any of those episodes it will be linked down below but I would like to also release season three and essentially just keep it up, keep it going, keep it being consistent, find new and exciting topics to discuss on my podcast and um, just continue that passion. And I actually talked a little bit about this when I talked about Skillshare in a previous video because when I was setting up my podcast, um, Skillshare was a website I found incredibly helpful for doing that. And equally, I have made use of Skillshare already this year in my next goal, which is to learn to knit. I know, like, kind of random, right? Knitting is something I have wanted to take up for a long time, but I was never really taught whilst growing up. My granny did attempt to teach me to crochet when I was about 12, but that was, you know, 14 years ago. Um, and I didn't really take advantage of her tutelage at the time. However, my mum bought me two balls of wool for Christmas. Um, I've got this blue one and I've got a purple one. And um, then Diane, who is, you know, uh, who I like to think of as my bonus mum, <laughs> passed me down a set of her knitting needles, which is just lovely. These are old bamboo knitting needles that belong to her. Um, and are some of her favourites, she said, which is just really special. I'm using her knitting needles, um, and I, li I like that. And I have been knitting a scarf! Look at this! Right, so obviously I've not made major progress, but in saying that, for somebody who couldn't knit a couple of days ago, I'm quite impressed by how well I've been doing. I've been sitting listening to my audiobook um, and doing maybe like a knit and a pearl at a time, which is two rows, and um, I, I feel like I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it and I'm really enjoying it. And I would like to finish this scarf this year as well as maybe make a hat. So I, like I mentioned, I have been watching videos on Skillshare on how to knit and there are some fantastic ones that just start right from the beginning because I very much need that. I don't understand wool thicknesses or types or needle thicknesses or any of that kind of thing. And I feel like there's these excellent tutorials that can give me from the start to the tools I need all the way through to the beginning like casting on to my needles, which I didn't even know what casting on was a few days ago, and I know I'm an expert, well, not quite, but I have learned what casting on is, I have learned to do your basic knit peril, um, like, row <laughs> type of knitting to make a scarf, um, and I found them so easy to follow, um, so educational and so inspiring, because it makes me want to move on to new things once I finish this and like I said I'd really like to knit a hat as well um, and just see where knitting can take me. It's got me very excited to kind of make some of my own things and it's something I'd like to maybe do more during the year is like for birthday and Christmas presents is maybe knit things for people. So I've been enjoying learning that on Skillshare and that's one of the wonderful things about Skillshare I think especially as we're going into the new year. I'm somebody that does not really believe in 
New Year's resolutions that are about denial, that are about um, changes that make you feel uncomfortable, but instead why not take advantage of the New Year as a time to start something new and exciting, learn a skill, uh, experiment, try something you've never tried before, uh, finally just sit down and do it. And Skillshare has an amazing selection of educational videos on learning various different skills, all the way from, like I mentioned, starting up your own podcast, to uh, knitting your first scarf and far, far more on top of that. In fact, their range spans more than 25,000 different classes. Premium membership is less than $10 a month if you buy it annually. And like I said, you get a range of different classes to select from and you can do something like learn to knit, make some of your own clothes in the new year, or perhaps, um, get ready for university or start a new business project um, and I just think it's a really positive space for your new year goals and um, for doing new things in 2019. I do actually have a link that Skillshare have very kindly provided me down below that um, the first 500 of you to sign up via will get two months free trial so plenty of time to uh, give it a try and find out what classes there are available to you. Let your creativity run free or make a very simple bog standard scarf. But we'll get there. <laughs> now the next two things on my list are things to go and do and see but are more entertainment, um, performance orientated. So the first one is to go and see the musical 9 to 5 whilst it's in London. So 9 to 5 comes to the West End in London in February I believe and this is based on the film or is the film based on the musical? I'm actually not sure which one came first but I've seen the film. It is a film um, from a few decades ago with Dolly Parton and um, Jane Fonda and it obviously contains a song by Dolly Parton 9 to 5 and it's so much fun. It's such a great film. I think it's incredibly progressive for the time, even perhaps for now, um, and is very much like women power. So I love that film and really cannot wait to go and see the musical. So it might be something I do for my birthday with my friends, um, I'm hoping to at least. And I'd also like to go and see an opera at the Royal Opera House. So in 2018 I put on my list that I wanted to see an opera because I'd never before seen an opera. I've now seen two operas. Yes, I am essentially an opera connoisseur. Um, but one of the things I would love to do in 2019 is see an opera at the Royal Opera House um, as the two operas I saw uh, last year were in Edinburgh but this is also one of those cheeky things on my list that I know I'm going to get to do because my mum and I's friend Linda who is like family to me has offered to take me with her as she bought herself two tickets with a voucher she was given and asked me to come along as her uh, plus one. So I feel very, very lucky that Linda chose me to come with her and I cannot wait. So I believe we're doing that in March and I'm super excited to see an opera at the Royal Opera House. How swanky is that? The next thing I want to do in 2019 is kind of uncategorizable because it's completely unique and in its own category and that is to be a good bridesmaid. My lovely friend Ilsa, who also has a booktube channel um, and a book blog which I'll link down below, she is fabulous. Uh, we went to university together and we've lived together and I love her to pieces and she asked me to be her bridesmaid. <laughs> Can you believe it? Who would ask me to do that? But uh, yes, yeah, so Ilsa asked me to be a bridesmaid in 2019. She is getting married to her wonderful fiance Sam. And I've never been a bridesmaid before. So one of my goals in 2018 is to be an excellent bridesmaid and you know, live up to that job, uh, complete all my responsibilities to uh, do whatever Ilsa needs me to do and just like make her special day perfect as much as possible. So I'm really looking forward to um, being involved in that and, and helping out with things and I've already been set a few tasks that I am um, looking forward to completing. So um, yes, I would like to be a good bridesmaid. And following on from that, I have a few things I would like to do that involve travel. Now Ilsa's wedding is going to involve travel because it's up in the Scottish Highlands, but I would like to stay in a cottage somewhere in the UK, anywhere. Uh, England, Scotland, don't really care, but I would like to have a little trip with some of my friends or my boyfriend or both um, where I get to stay in a little cottage for a couple of nights and just have a lovely relaxing chilled out holiday where I read books and play board games and go for walks and drink wine and eat food and chat and that's just my dream. I love, love, loved going to cottages in the Highlands when I was a kid which was something we did quite often for holidays and I've not been and stayed in a cottage in years actually so I would really like to do that this year, that's my holiday aim. Um, I would also like to visit a couple of places in England that I haven't visited before just 
for day trips or one night trips. Uh, I don't know how far away they are from London so I need to do some planning. But one of them is to go to Brighton where I've never been before. And the other one is to go to Bath where I've never been before. And Bath in particular has some Roman baths so I really do want to see those. Um, but in 2018 I said I wanted to see more of England because I hadn't seen that much of it. And I did get to do that. I went to Leicester, I went to Oxford for the day and um, I now I feel like I'm upping my goal to two specific places I would like to see. And lastly in terms of travel, a very cheesy thing I would like to do in 2019 is um, to come up to Edinburgh with my boyfriend um, and show him all of my favourite places in Edinburgh because he's never been here with me before so I think that would be a really nice thing to do. Now my last four things are sort of either reading or relaxation related. So the first one is to have read by the end of 2019 25 Greek tragedies. So there are 33 surviving extant works by the three Athenian tragedians Aeschylus, Sophocles and Euripides. I have read 19 and one of my goals in general in life is to have read them all. So I'm at 19 at the moment. I think I could read six this year. They're very short so my goal is to have read 25 before 19, 2019 is over. So if you have any that you think I should prioritise, let me know. Similar to that, I would like to read more Shakespeare. This one's a little bit more vague. I don't have a specific number of Shakespeare plays I'd like to read, but you know, I'm thinking like at least another two. So I read one new Shakespeare play last year. New for me, obviously, not new for Shakespeare. <laughs> And I would just like to read some more this year. I'd like to be more familiar with Shakespeare's work. I actually really enjoy a lot of the plays I have read by him. Really love the ones I've gone to see, but reading is easier and more accessible on an everyday basis. So I'd like to read more Shakespeare. I would also just generally like to discover some more favourite fancy authors. I have discovered some absolute favourite fancy authors in 2018, like Juliet Marilli, Emma Hamm, Robin McKinley, Patricia McKillop, and I know that there are more. So I just generally want to try some new to me fancy authors in 2019 and find some that I love. Simple. Why wouldn't I want to do that in a year? And on top of that, lastly, I would like to listen to more classical music. I really enjoy classical music, but I'm very much that person that sticks on a study playlist of classical music or best of classical music can't identify that many songs to specific composers. Um, although, I was at Jen's a few months ago studying and uh, one of Bach's cello suites came on and I was like, I know this! I knew it was Bach! <laughs> um, but that is very rare. I think I can do that with like three classical pieces. And I just like to listen to more and just maybe become more familiar with classical music in the extent that I can maybe recognise some more styles, some more composers, that kind of thing. And just, you know, enjoy it. I just don't want to put pressure on myself, I just want to enjoy more classical music in the new year. So those are the things I want to do in 2019, all 19 of them. Again, I'm super grateful to Skillshare for having sponsored this video. Their website is fantastic. I've really enjoyed learning from their classes and will continue to do so in 2019. Um, if you have any recommendations for Skillshare classes that you have enjoyed, please do let me know in the comments down below. And I'd love to know what you are aiming to do in 2019. What things do you want to do that will bring you a little bit of joy? Uh, do let me know. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys!